it's Ivy Slater, and you're listening to Her Success Story Podcast, a show where gutsy businesswomen share their success journey. Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Her Success Story. We are continuing on with our incredible series on women leaders in technology. Um, I, everybody who's been following knows how passionate I have been about this series, how important it is, uh, has been for me truly to highlight women and uh, women leaders in technology. Um, we have come a long way and today I'm thrilled to introduce you to Renee Morozowicz. Renee has spent about 20 years in technology. She started um, doing coding and getting educations and teaching in tech, and today truly runs her own business. She's a service-based business. To, she owns a service-based business that develops an effective website and creates their first digital products. She's been a business owner since 2017. She's passionate about learning, goal setting, and finances. God, Renee, that is a reason I love you. Um, <laughs> she also loves hanging out in her hometown of Pittsburgh, curling up with a good book, and spending time with her partner and son, Renee, thank you so much for being here and welcome to Her Success Story. Thanks, Ivy. I'm really excited to be here today. So it's not often we get to speak to people who's been in the tech world of technology for a good 20 years. And you had a real, um, a, a corporate start, went on to teach and give us a little bit of your background and what drove you to get into technology. Yeah, so um, a couple stories there, I guess. I was actually recently talking with a friend and she, a couple years older than me, and she mentioned that when computers first came out, like in the 80s and 90s, that they were marketed towards boys. And I don't recall that. And I guess my dad maybe didn't know or care about that either because uh, my sister, it's just my sister and I, so no boys in our family, but my dad got us a computer in the very early 90s uh, when they were really, really expensive. And I got a computer in college also. And um, I had tried to pick a couple different majors. I had gone for, well, I was going for Spanish education. I was going for math and I changed to religious studies. And after about a year, I thought, well, I don't think I could make any money with this. So I better pick something that I could make some money with. So I went through the, the, the paper catalog, right? Like when you went to college in the, in the late nineties, they gave you the paper catalog. And I remember going down through the list of majors because I liked it there. I went down through the list and I was like, oh, computers, that's interesting. So I signed up for computer science and uh, I think there were maybe just two or three women in my group, uh, maybe 15 or so guys. And uh, the first year I didn't really understand what was happening. I didn't know what I had gotten myself into. And luckily I had a friend on my floor who really helped me quite a bit until it clicked. And there was definitely a, a clicking um, time that happened where it was like pre-understanding and post-understanding. So from there, uh, it was better. I enjoyed my classes. I finished my degree. And I did start in corporate America. I worked at PPG in 2001. I actually was just looking through my papers yesterday and found my initial uh, uh, acceptance letter, starting salary, bonus, like oh, to wow. look back, crazy, amazing, amazing things. Um, and it was good. I, I worked in a great department, but it just wasn't a very good fit. And I think at the time I didn't realize that there were other options and I didn't really, you know, I couldn't really find them. You know, the internet like wasn't really a thing. Googling, you know, Googling the, the answer to your question wasn't a thing yet. Um, there were Google groups. So if you had a question or you had a problem with something that you were coding, you could look on Google groups, but you know, that was about it. So it took me, it took me a good 15 more years to figure out uh, where where I belonged uh, in the tech world, but I did work in tech the whole time, so I did put good use to my degree and uh, you know money well spent, I guess. And didn't you also do some teaching in tech as around? I tech? did. I did. Yeah. So after a couple years um, in corporate America, I, I I just knew it wasn't for me, and I started teaching. I taught at two different junior colleges, and I taught um, Intro to Computers, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, Photoshop. Um, to a lot of students who were transitioning from careers 
uh, that no longer existed. For example, uh, we had a Sony plant that was close by that closed. So there was the Pennsylvania had a trade readjustment act where they paid people to go back to school to learn new careers. So students would go back for business, um, medical assisting, things like that. And I taught those students who really just didn't have any computer experience at all, how to, you know, do some basic things and then more advanced. And some students did have computer skills, but, you know, so we, we just kind of like helped everybody along um, to learn some more. And, you know, as you transitioned at corporate and you took, you know, you, you we, we've talked about, you know, you were a coder, you know. Was, yeah, 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 less so now, but yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah. guess maybe by nature, you, you just are, you're like, it's a certain type of mindset. It's a certain sort of like troubleshooting. Right, kind of it, it, there's a certain process there of the way you yes. think. yes. You know, and how did you take that when you think about that? How did you take that as far as when you decided, okay, you're going to transition again, um, you're going to start a business. What led you to start something where you're working there and they're working on websites? And there's so many people who work either the design side of websites or the back end coding of websites. There's only a select few who actually do both. How did you actually, I have so many questions for you, as you can tell. How did first you develop that skill set that enabled you to do that and then jump in and start a business? Because that takes guts. It's, I think it was one of those things where it just, no other things were an option any longer. I just couldn't, like after I taught for a while, I did go back into less corporate America, you know, like local small businesses and it was fine, but those things just weren't an option anymore. So I had to find something else. And, you know, sometimes when you transition careers, relying on what you were good at and what you knew is good, you know, for me to do like a complete 180 and, you know, go into like nutrition or, you know, something like that, like it wouldn't have any real things. So uh, kind of lean on. So um, the web, you know, it's very similar to some of the work I had done before. So I, I did lean more on that, that sort of um, back end type stuff. Um, and you don't really have to do too much coding nowadays. There are a lot of things that are already built. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. So you can rely on good tools and software that's already available, but, but really it's kind of combining all of that together and finding what works for the client. So different clients have different needs. And I really do like that um, kind of interaction with the client and trying to figure out where they are and where they want to get to. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, I, I don't do as much design. I can I have an eye for design, so I can tell you if it looks bad, but to do something totally from scratch um, is not my forte because I, I fall down these rabbit holes where I spend hours like looking at the button color, like is this right or this right, but I can assist designers in uh, letting them know, you know, what are good web practices, what's good for accessibility, um, you know, and I can talk with clients and, you know, say, okay, you know, for your industry, you know, you, this or this would be recommended. So it's, there's a, there's a lot of nuance to it, but I try to play to my my strengths wherever possible. And I think that that is a golden piece of playing to your strengths. And so often we do fall down rabbit holes of just trying to be all to everyone mm -hmm. versus focusing on playing to our strengths. It makes it so, so much more enjoyable to do work that you like to do and you're good at instead of work that you're not great at and you don't really like to do that much. So so true. That's mm -hmm. all I can say. So, so true. <laughs> um, so in um, building a business. It's fun. When did that, when did that aha come it? to you? You know, when did that aha yeah. come to you? I mean, I know like sometimes it's like some, it's, they say, you know, when one door closes, the next door opens. Yes. But I think the, the fallacy with those kind of things is that like, it's, it's a moment, you know, at no moment did I say, oh, this is the path and this is the answer. I think it's, you know, the culmination of several things. You know, I, I have a friend who's also a freelancer and, you know, talking with her and actually another friend uh, that has the same name, um, you know, who is a freelancer. So talking with them, seeing more possibilities, um, you know, just kind of diving in and learning different things that seem interesting. So it kind of all came together in a way that I didn't really see ahead of time. 
Uh, but one thing I did, there's a, there's a booklet, it's a free booklet online. It's called a year compass. It's just yearcompass.com. And I, I'm, I don't even remember how I found it, but you can print it out and, um, you know, make it into a booklet. And at the beginning of the year, it has you recap the previous year and set your intentions for the coming year. And so I would do these things. And I, I wrote at one point, and I think there was another book that I had read about, you know, writing something down and, you know, writing down, like I, if, I wasn't happy in my career in, in one year's time, then I would find something different. And looking back on that, by that time, I had already found something different. So, you know, maybe it's a little bit woo woo, but this kind of, um, you know, setting the, setting the, the intention in your mind and then letting your mind figure it out. Like in the, it's like the background processing. So letting your mind, um, you know, find the way to yeah. where you want to get to, because it's, it's not very clear and it, it's not like, Oh, you know what I want to do? I'm going to do this. And this is how I'm going to do it. It's not clear. So you, you're kind of blind sometimes going down these paths and thinking like, okay, am I going the right way or not? But um, you kind of, it's, it's trust. And I think freelancing is trust also, because I think if you come at it from a scarcity mindset, it will, you'll take bad clients. Um, you'll work with not bad clients, but you know, not, not a great fit for you. Well, it's, it's you just, end up taking clients that are truly not aligned. Yes. Correct. Correct. You know, and I, and I think there, there's an important piece there. Um, you know, we all can work with it when, when we look at what field we're in, when you're own a business, you was like, Oh, well, I could work with this, or I could work with this, or I could work with this, or I could work with this. And there's many things we can do. But mm -hmm. when you actually narrow that focus down and say, who do I love to work with? Why do I love to work with them? And what brings me the greatest joy? And you actually market to that and you narrow mm -hmm. that down. Your, your business has the opportunity to expand and develop more than you can ever imagine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, totally. And so agree. do you see yourself as a freelancer or a business owner? I'm curious. Yeah, so there's a thing. People talk about that quite a bit, you know, freelancer, business owner. I I I'd say business owner. I am interested in business development. I am interested in getting to a place. I don't necessarily believe in the hours for uh, the, the time for dollars sort of thing. You know, I do want to expand beyond that. I think people understand freelancer a little bit more than they understand business owner. And I think business owner is so it's, it's so, it's so big, you know, you could, my dad was a business owner, but he was a mechanic. So, you know, it's, it's really different. The work is different, even though maybe I'm not sure the the overarching uh, concept is the same. So I, I think business owner. Yes. And, you know, as far as, your how you niche down have you seen have you seen more at your clients um leaning towards things in technology because you speak their language or have they gone been all over the place or in somewhere else um I think people just I'm going to say they are where they are I kind of feel this way about students too where I, I feel like I can maybe only take people so far. They're only ready to go so far. And, and maybe this is with everybody. So for example, if you had never run a day in your life and you want to run a marathon, we're not going to get there very quickly, but over time, small goals, you know, small habits and consistency will get you there. So I like to help my clients along on whatever, where you know, meet them wherever they are and help them go where they want to go. Not everybody wants to learn certain things. Not everybody cares to do certain things. And really, it, you know, it's playing to your strengths. If your strength isn't technology or certain pieces of technology, you know, they could just pay me to do it and it's fine and everybody's happy. What do you see for the future for women who want to be, who are moving more to technology as a field? I think it's such an amazing field to get into. And I think that there are so many opportunities. There's so many small slivers, you know, of things that you don't even know exist out there. And I think that, um, you know, I think there's so much more flexibility now than there used to be and, and so many ways to learn technology now. So, you know, I do have a four-year degree, but you know, it's 20 years later. I don't know that if I was going into this, I would do the same thing because colleges, you know, are notoriously like a little behind. You have to go through certain accreditation processes and, and things like that, where, you know, doing a boot camp or, you know, other sort of educational learning experience, um, even YouTube videos 
I feel like you can be really on the cutting edge instead of, you know, kind of just a little bit behind, but um, there's still plenty of old technology around there. And not that every educational institution, you know, teaches old technology. I just think there's so much, there's so much to it so much more than there used to be as well. You know, the internet, like huge um, artificial intelligence, huge, uh, the cloud, you know, people don't even know what the cloud is. There's so much out there that I think um, it's it's great. And I also think, and, you know, not to be stereotypical, but I think as, you know, if you're a mom, you know, you have a lot of problem solving skills already. So, you know, that lends itself really well to a technology career because, you know, it's basically problem solving. I like that. Technology is problem solving. And that's mm-hmm. so true. So true. So Renee, how can our listeners learn more about you, follow you, connect to you? Yes. So my uh, information hopefully will be in the show notes. My name is yeah, a little absolutely. bit long. Um, I'm at Renee Morose, which every every place I am, which is Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram, um, and my website, ReneeMorosewitch.com. Um, but yeah, just look at the show notes because it'll be a long time for me to spell it for you. Perfect. And (laughs) viewers and listeners always know that all the contact information is in the show notes. And one thing I encourage you to do from listening to today's, her success story and our conversation with Renee, think about what was the biggest aha or impact for you. Take a moment, identify it. Feel free to put that in the notes below and clarify for yourself one action you can take based on listening. There's a lot of great content out there. There's a lot of great information out there. When you give yourself over to listening and embracing it, see what you're going to do with it. So give it a listen, identify that aha, that takeaway, and create the action for yourself. We're here to support you in it. Thank you for joining us for Her Success Story. Thank you for joining us as we continue this series in Women Leaders in Technology. If you missed any of the episodes, each one is very different. So give them a listen, see the leaders, and let us know what you think. Thanks again. See you next time.